Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. JN Bank warns against counterfeit manager's check in circulation. Jamaica National Bank says it is aware that counterfeit JN manager's checks are in circulation. We therefore urge our members and the public to exercise caution when accepting checks, especially those within the series 51009427 and 51009932, the bank said in a brief statement on Tuesday. It said that in the meantime, its teams are in contact with the authorities. The JN Group is urging members of the public not to hesitate to contact its member care center if they are concerned about any check they may have received. Five Jamaican students returned to Ireland from Ukraine, says John Sussumit. The Minister of Foreign Affairs says five Jamaican students studying in the Ukraine have returned to Jamaica amid fears of the Eastern European country being invaded by neighbors Russia. It comes after Portfolio Minister Senator Kamina John Sussumit issued an advisory last week for students in the country to make arrangements to travel quickly if circumstances change. In several tweets on Tuesday, John Sussumit revealed that since that update, outside of the five students that have left Ukraine, seven others have requested the ministry's assistance to leave, three of whom have since reconsidered. John Sussumit also shared that two of the universities housing the majority of the Jamaican students have since expressed that, in light of the geopolitical tensions, they will offer online classes until April 1. The third university, she revealed, is still hosting face-to-face -face classes, but is open to considering adjustments. The minister concluded her update on Tuesday by revealing hopes for a de-escalation of the Ukraine-Russia situation. We note there have been some signals of de-escalation and continue to hope for diplomatic solutions, she shared. The situation is, however, dynamic, so we will continue to monitor and share information, provide help and encourage our Jamaican students to stay in touch and continually assess their individual circumstances. A compound chief curry in breach of Firearms Act Chief Executive Officer, CEO of the Firearm Licensing Authority, FLA, Shane Darling, has said that Richard Curry, Colonel of the Akompong Maroons in St. Elizabeth, has been found in breach of the Nation's Firearm Act. Responding to questions from reporters on Tuesday at an FLA press conference Tuesday morning at the AC Hotel in St. Andrew, Darling said that Curry was issued with two guns permit, which are now out of date. Based on my checks, Mr. Curry is in breach. His license is not up to date. He has not done the renewal process and as such, the matter has been referred to the police for them to assist, Darlene stated. In August last year, the FLA said it would launch an investigation into an incident in which Curry was seen in a video which emerged on social media with what appeared to be a shotgun slung over his back during a confrontation with members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force in Beth Salem, St. Elizabeth. The cops had allegedly been in Beth Salem to cut down marijuana growing in the era, sparking outrage from residents. The Akompong chief has gone to the nearby district of Beth Salem to stand in solidarity with the people there. In the video, Curry was heard telling the police to lower their weapons and leave the area, while residents beat drums and chased away the cops who eventually left the community in a truck. Police curfew. Curfew imposed in sections of Trench Town. A curfew has been imposed in sections of Trenchtown community in the Kingston Western Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 15, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Thursday, February 17. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. North along 11th Street from the intersection of Greenwich Street and 11th Street using an imaginary line to the intersection of Paul Vault Pathway and Collisimate Drive. East along Collisimate Drive from the intersection of Pole Vault Pathway and Collisimate Drive to the intersection of Collisimate Drive and 7th Street. South along 7th Street from the intersection of Collisimate Drive and 7th Street to the intersection of 7th Street and Greenwich Street. West along Greenwich Street from the intersection of Greenwich Street and 7th Street to the intersection of 11th Street and Greenwich Street. 
during the hours of the curfew. All individuals within the boundaries of the curfew are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized in writing by the ground commander. Illegal electrical connections attract to firefighters in Westmoreland. The Westmoreland Fire Department has charged that an increase in illegal electrical connections in the parish is putting the lives of firefighters at risk. Speaking at the regular General Council meeting for the Westmoreland Municipal Corporation, Christopher Stone, the officer in charge of fire prevention in Westmoreland, said his colleagues have been facing challenges as it pertains to illegal connections in various areas across the parish, but mostly where there are informal settings. From time to time, whenever the fire brigade responds to structural fires or even bushfire, we would have pawns upon illegal electrical wires running across the ground and as a result of it, it is posing some serious challenges to us as firefighters as we try to extinguish fires, Stone reported. He said when firefighters attempt to extinguish fires with water, they run the risk of getting electrocuted. Water is the main source of material that the fire brigade uses, so if a firefighter wants to use water to put out a fire, he or she would be putting their lives at risk if the water comes in contact with that wire explained stone. He underscored that this issue is not new to the fire brigade, but it has been increasing over the past couple of months, with firefighters seeing at least one case each month. Stone added that this issue has also been slowing down the response time of firefighters when they get to the scene of a blaze. Instead of dismounting a unit and attacking a fire quickly, if the crew notices that illegal electrical connections, then they would have to work on isolating the wires to make the scene a bit safer in order to complete that firefighting operation. This would take a bit longer, noted Stone. Portland Police report reduced crime numbers so far this year. Superintendent in charge of Portland Police Division, Kenneth Chin, told the Municipal Corporation meeting last Thursday that there have been lower crime numbers in the parish since the start of the year, with an improved clear operate. As of February 9, 2022, we have seen a reduction by 17 in serious and violent crimes. Last year, this time, we had 20 serious and violent crimes. This time, we have three, so we have an 85% decrease for the comparative period, said Chen. The crimes which are seen a reduction compared to last year are murders, two last year, one this year, Last year, five robberies, even break-ins, three shootings, one case of larceny, and this year, we have none of those. Rape, one last year, and one this year. One aggravated assault last year, and the same this year as well. We have seen a reduction or similar figures in all categories of serious and violent crimes. We have cleared up two offenses from last year and two offenses from previous years. The comparative period for last year, we had a 5% clear-up, so we have seen a big increase in our clear-up rate added chain. He explained that the single murder recorded in Portland so far this year came during a domestic dispute. There was a father and a son incident in Fairy Hill last year where the son injured the father on December 21st and he subsequently died January 6th this year. The post-mortem was done in February and it has been categorized as a murder for this year, said Chin. He said the police have staged a number of operations and walkthroughs in sensitive areas also. We have had some success in Portland's most wanted man, Elroy Griffiths, was captured on January 18, and two persons of interest, Marlon Bryce and Maurice Clark, were held at a chain. He gave credit to the residents of Portland and the police for the level of success being achieved in keeping the crime rate low in the parish. St. Anne records COVID-19 spike in January. With an alarming increase of COVID-19 positive cases recorded in St. Anne for January, Medical Officer of Health in the parish, Dr. Tamara Henry, is urging residents who have been ignoring the protocols to ensure they are washing their hands and wearing masks. Henry made her plea during the monthly sitting at the St. Anne Municipal Corporation meeting last Thursday. We continue to advise persons to ensure that they are wearing their mask, maintaining distance, and physically washing their hands and sanitizing properly. 
we also have challenges as persons continue to wear their mask inappropriately, so I'm urging people in their communities to remind their neighbors about the importance of wearing their mask properly, said Henry. In January, St. Anne recorded 1,554 COVID-19 positive cases, the most the parish has recorded for any one month. When we look at January in comparison to December, we saw an overall 170% increase, added Henry, who charged that a major contributor to the spike was public passenger vehicles. We also want to encourage taxi men to reduce the number of passengers in their vehicles. Persons also continue to go to work when they are unwell and persons in their workspaces start to feel ill and it runs the possibility of having facilities completely closed because there are no workers to continue operations, said Henry. The majority of the cases in St. Anne are in the 25 to 44 age group, with the St. Anne's Bay Health District contributing the most to positive cases. The St. Anne's Bay Health District has recorded 3,009 cases, while Alexandra Health District is the least affected with 663 positive COVID cases, said Henry. In St. Anne, 7,934 COVID-19 cases have been confirmed since the first case was recorded in 2020, with 4,545 being females and 3,389 males. The parish is, however, off to a better start for February. We are at least 31 cases up to Thursday, February 10, and we really do hope this downward trend will continue because we don't want the numbers to go up again, Henry stated. I'll do youth, fluel in crime, South Mayor states. Mayor of Savannah Lamar, Bertel Moore, in his opening address to last Thursday's monthly meeting of the Westmoreland Municipal Council, lamented that crime situation in the parish and called on government to engage more youths in order to curb crime and violence. According to Moore, while residents of the parish accept the implementation of different zones of special operations in sections of Savannah Lamar, they want more to be done. We welcome the situation that the security personnel are out there because we need to see in whatever way we can curb crime and violence, we must do that. But along with that, there are certain responsibilities that the government has in order for us to curb crime and violence declared more. As Zozo was declared in sections of Southern Savannah Lamar by Prime Minister Andrew Holness last month following several shootings and murders in the parish. Westmoreland was among the top five parishes in terms of murders in 2021, with 128 killings recorded by the police, a 60% increase over 2020. According to the police, murders in Westmoreland have already increased by more than 400% so far this year when compared to the corresponding period last year. Moore argued that the decline in several industries in the parish has left a gap into the employment of many youngsters who are now enticed into a life of crime and declare that they would like to see something done to address this. Sugar is dead. The tourist industry is bobbing and weaving at this present time, not because we don't treat our people good, but because of the COVID situation throughout the island and the world. So I personally want to see something done in these areas in order to have the young people occupied, said Moore. He lamented, the number of unemployed youths in the parish and argued that this has been behind the spike in the crime rate in the parish. Moore called on the government and private citizens to engage these youths in gainful employment. I am tired of seeing more young people in the street corners digging out their hand middles. We must engage them one way or another. Nobody can tell me that these young people don't want to work, but if there is no work out there for them, they cannot work. So let us put our hands and hearts together and find ways to occupy their time, said Moore. JEF boss wants greater focus on root causes of violent crimes. Jamaica Employees Federation JEF President David Wan is suggesting that greater law enforcement focus be placed on identifying and addressing the root causes of violent crimes to stem the wave currently being experienced. Citing drug trafficking and lottery scamming, among the illicit activities flowing a significant percentage of the crimes across Jamaica, Wong says, trying to arrest all the persons who are killing each other over issues involving 
these engagements is just a short-term response. In a release, Wong suggested that getting to the root of the drug trafficking and putting away the heads of scamming organizations could make a dent in crime that is more long-lasting. So, I'd like to see the security forces go more for eradicating the drug routes and taking out the kingpins in the scamming business as a means of crime fighting rather than to just engage in hard policing and trying to monitor everything. That to me is one of the more strategic things I think they should do, Wang shared. In the meantime, Jamaica Chamber of Commerce JCC President Ian Nito says the organization is looking forward to the government advancing development of the proposed Enhanced Security Measures Bill. The bill is designed to empower the security force with the tools deemed necessary to disrupt criminal network, reduce violence, and increase public order. During his throne speech, marking the ceremonial opening of Parliament for 2022-2023 on February 10, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen indicated that the bill's development is among several legislative engagements being prioritized by the government during the upcoming year. He noted that, in building a nation of peace, opportunity, and prosperity, the security of our citizens is of paramount importance. Noting the difference of opinions over the use of states of public emergency, Nita says the JCC believes that if we accelerate the enactment of this piece of legislation, that would give the security forces another effective tool in the fight against crime. Sepran Group Chief Executive Officer CEO Richard Pandoni notes that the government has been looking to take what he described as a multi-pillar approach to tackling crime based on the national security measures announced or initiated. They have sought, for example, to increase border security, and we see that they brought more boats among other inputs for marine protection, he said. The separate CEO says based on these and other interventions, such as SOEs and the recent announced Get Every Illegal Gun campaign, he thinks the government is trying to approach the fight against crime from the angle of what's coming into Jamaica and what's already here. However, I'd like to see more action around border control. The illegal guns being used in violent crimes must be getting in somehow. So that's another aspect for consideration, he adds. Pandoni is, nonetheless, heartened by the growing regularity with which the Jamaica Constabulary Force is locating illegal weapons. Among the latest finds are three firearms, a high-powered AK-47 rifle, a shotgun, and a Uzi submachine gun, along with 53 assorted rounds of ammunition, which were seized at the Stadium East Complex in Kingston during an operation. The former Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association president says based on these and other finds by the police, clearly I think they have some good intelligence going on and that's leading to some unusual recoveries of firearms. So, kudos to them and we hope this continues. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.